research and discovery. Futurists. If there's one thing that's proved an enduring inspiration through the ages, it's wine. It's been central to the ancient Greeks, the Romans, in the Bible, right up to present day, as a bringer of merriment and indeed health. During the harvest in the Catalan vineyards, there's even an echo of Shakespeare who wrote in Othello, good wine is a good familiar creature if it be well used. I think that everything is good in moderation. It's okay to drink a glass of wine per day, but a liter a day won't do you good. They say that grape skin helps to prevent cancer, especially the black ones. That's what they say. My father had a stroke and the doctor recommended him to drink red wine. It's good for your health, for the blood. Research has already linked red wine's health-giving properties to the antioxidants it contains. They help to prevent certain illnesses by destroying the free radicals which cause chemical damage to cells. That appears to be one of the reasons that wine-drinking countries have such striking low rates of cardiovascular disease. Here in these barrels we keep all the red wine, the factor behind the so-called French paradox. That is, the French, while having the same diet as other Europeans, live longer and healthier because they drink red wine as a fundamental part of their regular diet. Wine, and particularly red wine, has a high content of polyphenol antioxidants, or tannins, as much as two to three grams per litre. But wine can't absorb all the health-preserving elements which exist in the grape. Most of the antioxidants are left behind in the so-called pomace. That's the waste skin and seed which is thrown away after pressing. This is pumice, the residue of winemaking. It's wet, as you can see. One possibility being studied is to use what's left of the grapes for cosmetic products. There are several research projects in this field, especially regarding red and black grapes, because they contain lots of antioxidants, which are very good for skin preservation. Many studies have shown that polyphenols prevent various kinds of cancer. They help in fighting inflammatory conditions like coronary artery disease, and they enhance the immune system. European scientists coordinated in Austria set about extracting polyphenols from winemaking waste in a project called, appropriately, Paradox. The goal was to separate polyphenol essence from the pomace and preserve it for adding to non-alcoholic food products. The problem with wine is that it contains ethanol, which is not good for liver. It damages the liver and it's addictive. With our products, we try to extract and preserve the polyphenols contained in the wine. Researchers looked into the pomace of grapes from different climates, varieties and winemaking processes to find the most efficient and environmentally friendly way of isolating the grape antioxidants. The project required the close cooperation of 16 partner institutions across the EU, including wine growers, university laboratories, as well as big food and drink manufacturers. Esto que tenemos aquí, los residuos de vinificación, the residues of the wine-making process have practically no value. They're even toxic. We take this, the stuff with zero or even negative value, and transform it into a highly valuable product. Getting the polyphenol elements out of the grape skin and seeds can be done in the lab with traditional extraction methods using water and alcohol. But for large-scale industrial production, scientists suggested using a CO2 separation technique, which is considered greener and more economically viable. This is the result of the extraction process. It's the concentrate of polyphenols and other antioxidants. With this, we can really start the process of micro-encapsulation. To preserve their antioxidizing properties, the small granules of polyphenol powder need to be protected from any contact with oxygen or light. 
So the scientists have to cocoon the particles in protective polymer capsules before they can be added to food ingredients. They mix the polyphenol powder with oil and polymers, resulting in myriad microscopic polymer balloons encapsulating the tannin. The result, they say, is a natural, easy to use and stable food additive they've called Paradox. Once inside the human body, acidic pH levels destroy the polymer shells and the antioxidants can flow into the bloodstream. We see here the microcapsules, and in these microcapsules are the polyphenols. Here we can see the microcapsules and polyphenols inside. It's evident that their sizes vary, so when the capsules enter the stomach, they dissolve gradually, and there's a good release of the polyphenol compounds. This is precisely what we're aiming for. This ball is just like a microcapsule. Polyphenols are inside. And like the air inside this ball, they are protected from the environment. Nothing gets out or comes in. And that's exactly what we're trying to achieve by encapsulating the grape extract. And the research is looking further ahead to develop individual polyphenol formulae to enrich different kinds of food, from muesli bars and bread to dairy products and drinks. But food chemistry experts warn that more extensive research is needed to evaluate fully the recommended dosage and medical effects of various antioxidant additives. When see in uh, the you have to be cautious buying these kind of healthy products in a supermarket because exactly how much of this substance you're ingesting is essential. It could spell the difference between a positive or a negative effect on your health. The target is to see supermarket shelves around the world stocked with an increasing variety of food products enriched with polyphenols derived from grapes. Specialists believe it will echo the trend for organic food, and there's a growing group of customers who already hope the benefits of antioxidants could counteract the effects of a bad environment or an overindulgent lifestyle. And an additive is already being made available to the food industry for research and development. Pues. It doesn't have any taste. It feels a little like flour, and it won't change the original flavor of the final product it has been added to. In the Bible it's written, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. Two thousand years on, and the scientists reckon it's not just the stomach which could benefit.